All right, fam, so we are back at it again with another crazy video. Now, in today's video, we got my boy, Bishop William Murphy. All right, so it's a lot of things, a lot of things that's been happening with this particular pastor. So I want you guys to go ahead, hit the like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications. Without further ado, let's get right into it. <laughs> here tonight look at your neighbor say walk it out they trying to act like they don't know what you referring to look at them and tell them walk it out All right, so the next clip, the very last clip is going to be his response. But I'm not, I'm going to give my thoughts and everything on how I feel about this at the end of the video. The next clip is his response, but I'm only going to watch it up to a certain part. Okay, it's only a certain part that I want to watch it up to. The whole clip is like four minutes long, but I do want to have time to share my opinion on this whole entire situation. Uh, yeah, so whatever I do, let go. Uh, hey, y'all do me a favor. If people are on here saying stupid stuff, and yes, I said stupid because it's stupid. 150 people got saved. What, it, what? What? How many people got saved at your church Sunday night? Let's start there. This shuts the conversation down, y'all. Don't, don't argue with nobody. Just ask them. How many people got saved at your church Sunday? No, 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 I'm not. No, no, not the people who were mad at their last pastor because he held them accountable and they left mad. And then they came to join your church because their season shifted. Now, I'm not talking about those folks. I'm talking about folks who weren't in church, who felt something supernatural in your church and decided to partner. If you can't out soul win me, shut your mouth. Okay? <laughs> there you go. All right. So let's jump in here. Okay. All right, now let me let me first off say this, Bishop William Murphy. I don't know you, bro. I don't know you. Uh, never seen your church. You know what I'm saying? Never heard of you before. But this is the reason why I believe that what was play what was played at church on New Year's Eve. A lot of people are saying, "Oh man, that church lit. Oh man, this church busting. This and that." But y'all don't understand. Hold on. First of all, bro, this is God's house. This is God's holy temple. Why are we sitting here acting like this is a club when this is God's church? This is his home. And we in this home getting lit to secular music that we supposed to be playing in the club. You I get your service. I get the I get the message walking it out. Walk it out. I get it. You know what I'm saying? I get the message. You feel me? But again, it's other songs that you could play that are worshiping God. That's talking about walking it out, going into the new year and a new season, allowing God to use us, transform us. It's a lot of different gospel songs you can use for that. Now, don't get me wrong. I love a uh, swag surfing and walking it out. Those some, those some, you know, OG party songs. Those some OG party songs. But however, I would never dare step foot into God's temple and play this type of music. And play this type of music. It's already bad enough that you got people. Look, I I I look at it like this. It be it, it used to be people. Uh, what, what I how I grew up. Okay, how I grew up. And this this is just how I grew up. Everybody's different. But my parents, I don't even think, if I'm not mistaken, I don't even think they cursed in the parking lot of church because you're in, a, in front of the church. And my mama raised me to always turn down the radio. If I'm listening to anything secular and I pass a church, I gotta turn down the radio. That was my mother. Now, me now, I listen to a lot of gospel and I don't curse. So therefore, I don't go into the church parking lot cursing and I don't, you know, blast my music or play secular music around the churches. However, I just look at it as a level of respect. It's a level of reverence. You know what I'm saying? Just how you have fear of your mother, 
and I'm not saying fear as in like, oh, I'm scared of you, but you have fear in the level of I respect my mother that I wouldn't do certain things in front of her and I wouldn't do and I wouldn't say certain things around her. Same thing with God. We need to have a level of fear, not even a level. We just need to fear God because number one, he's a holy God. He he is our creator. He's our father. So we need to fear him. We need to have the utmost respect for him. It's not to say that, ah, God, I'm scared of you. God don't want us to be scared of him, but he wants us to respect him. And playing this type of music in his church, that is not respecting the Lord's home. That's you saying, look, I'm going to bring people closer to Christ by trying to feed their sinful ways. Because, again, you're talking about if you can out soul win me. Bro, this ain't no video game. You're talking about out soul, out soul you, out soul win you. Fam, this ain't no video game, bro. This is not no time where we're going to out-soul win each other, bro. We are kingdom children. So at the end of the day, it don't matter how many souls I done win while I'm on this earth. It don't matter how many souls you done win. God is not going to look at you and say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You won 17,000 souls while you was on earth. And he's going to tell me, oh, you filthy servant. You only won two servants while you was... God is not that type of God. I don't know why you even said, why you even said what you said. If a hundred some people got saved at your church on New Year's Eve, congratulations. But this is the problem with certain churches. They want to feed into what society is doing to win people to Christ. You do not have to be like the people to win them to Christ. Was Jesus acting like the people around him to win them to Christ? If they left, they left. If they wanted him, they wanted him. So again, it's not about winning souls all the time, bro. We are here to plant seeds. If that seed happens to grow and their soul has been touched and they felt something supernatural, then let's go. Another soul won for the kingdom of heaven. But I'm not going to... I'm not going to degrade myself and, and, and bow down to the values that they want me to bow down to so I can win them to God. I'm not going to do that. I'm not. So if, that, if I'm around people that only play certain type of music and that all they listen to is rap, I don't listen to rap. So therefore, why would I want to listen to rap in my car because they in my car? So what? They can see, oh man, he a Christian and he listens to this? I'm going to have to give my life to Christ. No. Because I'm going to tell them the truth. Me listen to me not listen to rap is because I know what it's doing to my spirit. I want to live more in the spirit than I do in the flesh. I want to guard my ears. I want to guard my heart above all else for it determines the course of my life. That's what I want to do. And I know that these rap songs are demonic. A lot of them in today's generation are demonic. Only rapper I listen to is Tom McDonald. And I listen to Christian rap. That's about it. Any other rap, I don't listen to. So therefore, you know what I'm saying? We do not have to be like, we do not have to be like sinners in order to get them to follow Christ. You are a pastor. It's so many different ways you could have went about this, especially in God's temple. This is God's temple. Why are we listening to this type of music in God's temple? Why? Why are we listening to this type of music in God's temple? This is God's holy temple, and we over here playing, now walk it out, walk it out. Now, don't get me wrong. They was killing it. I seen an old girl in the front. She was, uh, uh, she really went back into the club for real, for real. But this, but God's church ain't no club, bro. God's church ain't no club. Show some show some respect. Show some respect. It's not about what you. It's not about oh, they. I got a hundred people saved. It's not about that. Show some respect for the Lord. Forget the, forget people. I'm not gonna say forget people, but I want to say this: if you spread the gospel to somebody and they don't receive it, okay, it wasn't their time. It wasn't their time yet. But that's the scariest thing about hearing the gospel is that God is going to judge them based off the knowledge that they know about him. So if you don't know, if you, if you done got the word spread to you, but you want to continue to live in your wicked ways, God's wrath is going to come upon you because you can't say you never heard the word of God. You can't say you never heard the word of God. Think about all the talents that God was destroying. He brought, he raised prophets among them to warn them what's to come if they don't repent. But they continue to live in the way they want to live. So what did God do? His wrath came upon them. So they can't say, God, we didn't know. No, there were, God's wrath came upon them because they continue to live in their wicked ways. 
So Bishop William Murphy, all I'm going to say, bro, is may you see what, what was wrong with this picture. Hopefully you will eventually see what was wrong with this picture. Instead of coming out and saying that a hundred people got saved and you can now so away me, then you need to be, shut your mouth. That's prideful, bro. That's the same reason why the devil got kicked out of heaven because of pride. And the way you responded was prideful. If you got all these people telling you that this was wrong, if you got all these people telling you that, bro, this shouldn't have happened in God's holy temple. If you got all these people, tell, shouldn't that tell you something like, Dang, maybe I did do a little too much. Maybe I was being a little too, too wild. But you came back and said, if you can't now soul with me, then shut your mouth. What type of stuff? If I can't out soul win you, when did when did this become a video? When did this become a contest? A competition? I'm not in competition with you, my brother. We both trying to make it to heaven. Why would I want to be in competition with you? I don't know how many souls I done won. I, I don't know. But I know that every day I'm spreading the gospel out of love. I may not do it in the way that you may doing it to win these people alone. But I'm doing it in a way that people need to hear it. Because I know that I'm not a person who I don't want you to act like me to win me to Christ. I need you to be real with me. Tell me what's real. Bro, you going to go to hell if you continue to live in your wicked ways. Be real with me. Now, I don't go to other people like that because you talk to everybody differently. I don't go to other people like, you're going to go to hell if you don't let me. I ain't going to people like that, but that's something that I will take. I would like you to speak to me like that. But I spread the gospel out of love. I tell them like, hey, look, I don't know your story, but God loves you. Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. I tell them the good news, and if they don't want to accept it, then they don't want to accept it. I walk away. I kick them from my feet, and I keep going. And I continue to live my life asking God to use me as a vessel for his kingdom, whichever way that is, whether that's on YouTube or in person. This ain't no competition, Bill, Bishop William Murphy. This ain't no competition. It's not, sir. We're not in competition with you, bro. And if you're in competition with any other church, then, hey, man, God needs to really work on your heart. Because this ministry is supposed to be for him, not for not not to see how many seats you can fill in your in your sanctuary. This is why certain people run away from the church, bro. Seriously. Y'all let me know what y'all uh, think about this in the comment section below. Bishop William Murphy. Uh, yeah, y'all let me know how y'all feel about this in the comment section below. I love each and every one of y'all. God bless. Stay blessed. Peace.